We've looked at a lot of Linux distributions on this channel so far, but today's a little bit different. One might even say, if they were being a little too dramatic, that it's a little tiny bit special. This isn't just any distro. This is the distribution which saved an entire household of PCs from running Windows. This is the distribution that stopped distro hopping. This is Pop! OS. Pop! OS comes from a company called System76. And much like Tuxedo Computers, System76 also sells their own hardware. They've actually got a lot more in the works, but we'll talk about that later. For now, let's dive into the operating system and find out how it runs on non-System76 hardware. As usual, in order to keep this entire guide complete so you have everything you need in one spot and you don't have to keep jumping around to different videos, we are going to do the beginning section being getting you a USB that you can use to boot into another operating system. But because I have an entire video dedicated to that, we're going to do it very fast in this video. So if it's too fast for you here, go and watch that video and then you can come back to the end of this section. But for those who have already got one of these USBs, or for those of you who want to try the fast section, let's get started. Grab a USB, back up all the data on that USB, download Balina Etcher, download Ventoy, open Balina Etcher, select Ventoy in the first section, select your USB in the second section. Make sure that you've backed up all of that data because once you hit flash, all the data on that USB is gone and you're ready to start distro hopping, which is kind of ironic considering this is the distribution which stops me distro hopping. Again, if that was way too fast, you can watch this video right here where it's much slower and we go into a lot more detail because we are targeting this at beginners, which means any distribution that requires a terminal to use for basic things gets an automatic fail. But based on everything I've already told you so far, you can probably guess whether Pop! OS is going to need a terminal or not. So it's time to download Pop! OS. Searching for Pop! OS in your browser is easy. It's such a unique name that you really don't have to type Linux at the end, but you can if you'd like. Clicking on the correct link gets us to a download button on the front page, but credit is also due for having a cookies notice with a reject all button, something so many other websites can't seem to manage. Clicking on download and scrolling down the page gives us two versions of the operating system to download. This was something that was huge a few years back, as from memory, not a lot of distributions had an NVIDIA version of their .iso. Not that it was needed in this old AMD household, but it's absolutely appreciated. We'll talk more about NVIDIA and Linux in a future video. Click download on the first link if you're using an AMD GPU. Use the bottom link if you're using an NVIDIA GPU. While you're waiting for that to download, take note of the version number next to Pop! OS. Not that there are different versions on the website, but we'll be coming back to it later on in this video. Once that's downloaded, plug in your Ventoy USB, then either copy and paste or drag and drop the ISO file onto your USB. Mine is downloaded to my desktop, but yours will likely be in your downloads folder. Once that's done transferring, eject your USB, move over to the PC you want to install Pop! OS on and back up all of its data. Once you're done backing up all your data, regardless if you want to do a clean slate, partition an SSD or install to a separate SSD, because all of those processes could go wrong and wipe all of your data if you don't back it up. But once that's done, shut down the PC you want to install Pop! OS on. Now plug in your Ventor USB and find the delete or F2 keys on your keyboard. Turn on your PC and rapidly press either delete or F2 until you enter the BIOS, which should look something like this. If your PC just went back to the operating system it was on before, shut it down and try again with the opposite key from what you tried before. So F2 if you tried delete and delete if you tried F2. But once you're in the BIOS, look for anything to do with boot, specifically a boot override or a boot menu. On this Gigabyte motherboard, it's on the save and exit page but on this Asus motherboard, it is on the front page on the bottom right. You might need to use the arrow keys if your BIOS doesn't have mouse support. Once there, find your USB, hover over it and hit enter on your keyboard. Don't get fooled if your USB isn't the same name as it was inside the operating system, that's perfectly normal. 
You should see Ventoy now. Find Pop! OS with the arrow keys and press enter. Normal mode is fine, so press enter again. After a few moments, depending on the power of your hardware, you'll be at the desktop. Pop! OS uses GNOME exclusively, much like how Tuxedo only offered a version with KDE Plasma. The other reason that there's a parallel between Tuxedo and Pop! OS is that they're both based off Debian. The installer will appear after a few moments, but this is the try before you buy section or live USB, so you don't have to install straight away. But that's what we're here for in this video, so let's do it. You know what to do with the language and keyboard. After that, the installer has an option to try demo mode, which we've already discussed, but it's nice to point that out for anyone who wasn't aware. As usual, we'll do a clean install. Then we'll select our SSD on the next page and click erase and install. There are separate pages for your name and password. If you'd like encryption, meaning that someone can't just pull out your SSD and put it into another computer with another operating system to access all the data, then go ahead. But don't encrypt is also a perfectly good option. And this is also the last page of the installer. So once we click install, we're off to the races. The time it takes to install will also depend on the speed of your hardware. But once it's done, it's time to restart. A few moments later, and we'll be at the login screen for Pop! OS. Don't worry if you want it auto login, it's here and we'll see it up and running once we've done our other usual routines. Our welcome screen knows exactly what we're about to do though and gives us the option to customize the dock. Let's go with this option for a clean look. Speaking of clean, if you want just one workspace, you can turn that off here. Next, we get some notes on other customizations in Pop! OS. Those touchpad gestures will come in handy for laptop and trackpad users. And now we're on to dark mode. We like our privacy, which is one of the big reasons to leave Windows behind, so keep this off. And now it's time for our time zone, pun not intended. Feel free to sign into these accounts if you'd like. So even though the welcome screen has a few more pages than we're used to, adjusting the dock and switching to dark mode would have been at the top of the list anyway, so it was helpful. A quick visit to display settings for scaling on resolutions other than 1080p, right click on the desktop and select display settings. Now it's time for updates. Even though this is GNOME, we don't have the GNOME store here. In fact, this is a relatively customized version of GNOME. Instead, it's System76's very own store called the Pop Shop, and it's pretty great. Opening it up from the dock is easy, but did you notice that something is missing? Where's the maximize button? This threw me off at first, but it's just hiding in the settings menu. Settings is also in our dock next to the Pop Shop. Find the desktop section on the top left and click on it. Now scroll all the way to the bottom and select show maximize button under window controls. Now we can close settings, return to the pop shop and maximize the window. To get our updates, click on the hamburger menu near the top right and select updates and installed software. All we need to do is click update all and wait. Then we'll restart for good measure as we always do. But before we do that, let's set up auto login so we can check it's working once we've restarted. Click on settings again, then on the left, scroll down to users. Click unlock at the top right, then type in your password, and then hit the toggle for automatic login. If only Microsoft knew how to make it that easy rather than making our lives harder with every update. Now we'll restart and enjoy the clean desktop with no pop-ups or ads after updating. Let's head back to the pop shop and search for Steam. Click on the first option, and now click on the section that says Flathub. This is a drop-down menu where we can select the dev version, the official version of Steam for Linux. Click install and then type in your password. This is the same password you used when you created your local account during installation. Once that's done, you can close the pop shop, go down to your dock and click show applications, the grid of nine squares. Click on Steam here and it will start the proper install process. Now we can sign in and install a game as we would on Windows. As usual, the only difference at this point is Proton downloading with the game. Today's benchmark is Dirt 5. We'll be running at medium settings at 1080p. And during the benchmark, you'll notice that we really don't drop below 60 FPS at all, which is absolutely fine for an RX 580. Now, while we're here, because we've already covered emulation and EA, let's go and install a few emulators. 
Back over to the pop shop, we can search for Duck Station, PCSX2, RPCS3, and ZMU for PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and Xbox emulation, that's original Xbox, respectively. Unfortunately, the developer of Duck Station has decided not to support a flat pack version anymore, meaning that stores like the Pop Shop can no longer give you that option, which is really unfortunate if you wanted a one-click update all button, but we'll look at app images in a later video and we'll compare them to flat packs to see how easy it is to update them. So that's Pop OS, or at least that's the 22.04 version. This is based off of Ubuntu 22.04, and the number is the year and the month, being April 2022. But if you were to look at how many releases Ubuntu has had since then, you might be confused as to why there's not a newer version of Pop OS. So where's System76 at? Well, they're not only working on the next version of Pop! OS, but it won't be using GNOME or KDE. They're developing their very own desktop environment called Cosmic, and it's in beta now, which means that you can try it, or at least it's in beta at the time of filming, so maybe by the time you've seen this video, there's a brand new version of Pop! OS ready to go in stable. But you might be wondering why I'm covering it then and not the new version. Well, that's because whichever version of Pop! OS you pick, it doesn't really matter at this point in time. Because Pop! OS 22.04 is still an extremely stable operating system. I haven't had to use the terminal even once in over a year. And as I mentioned, this was the operating system that replaced Windows on every computer in this house. So when I ask the question, can Pop! OS replace Windows, I'm living, breathing proof that it absolutely can. And whether you have access to the older version or the newer version, I think you should definitely give it a go and see how it works for you.